Welcome to the Journey to Forever podcast, where we discuss the highs and lows of life and love. Join us, your hosts, Flo and Joe, for a weekly recalculation of our roots as we navigate the twists and turns with candid conversation, comfort food, and laughter. Welcome back, Forever family. Joe and I are recording this episode on February 14th. And for those of you who aren't big on celebrations, today is Valentine's Day. That day that is usually full of roses and cream-filled chocolates. But before we bite into the cream of today's topic, let's take a look at our opening segment called What's Your Story? Hi folks, hope you had a great week. Nice having you back. I have a question for Flo. Flo, do you have a story to share about losing your luggage on a trip? I do. (laughs) I know you're laughing with me forever, family. So many stories for (laughs) about traveling (laughs) to and from the US. But the good thing is this one is not related to New York in any way. This happened on a trip to LA. I was traveling for almost 24 hours because unfortunately the route from our home country to LA is from here to Miami. That was my route. And then Miami cross the United States to LA. And then I had to head over to Santa Barbara. But by the time I got to Miami, it was ridiculous in immigration. I spent over two hours in a line just waiting to be processed. I literally had to run to the gate and beg the attendant, the customer service person to allow me to check in on the flight. She's like, go, go, go. And I took off, I passed through security. I took off my shoes, grabbed everything from me and I ran to the gate because I, there was no way I could have missed that flight. So I, luckily I was able to get on the flight, made it to LA stood up at the carousel and waiting for my luggage, no luggage appeared. So I had to indicate to them, hey, my luggage didn't turn up. Then get on the bus (laughs) to Santa Barbara and had to wash my clothes in the the sink at the hotel because I, I went there for a conference and I had no clothes in my hand luggage. So the moral of the story, after that, I learned always have a change of clothes in your carry-on so that you don't face those embarrassing situations again. I mean, it wasn't too embarrassing because it was a casual sort of conference, meaning I didn't have to wear like formal business attire or anything. So what I had on was okay. But just the fact that I was wearing clothes that I'd spent the entire previous day in was frustrating to me. So did you ever get your luggage? I did. It it came late the following day. So that was great that I was able to shower, put on some clean clothes. <laughs> Most <laughs> important. That was good. Yeah. All right. So your question, Joe, got a story to share about a traffic jam that just wouldn't end? Ah, uh, yes, it was. Uh, I can't remember exactly what year, but it was the year that Red Bull came to Trinidad. Mm, I remember and that. Did the, it was a diving contest or something of the sort. Yeah. Yeah, where they have to, these man-made flying objects, just, mm-hmm. you know. And I happened to be out that morning. I said, okay, I'll go run my errand and head back home. Thinking, okay, this is a regular morning. But on my way out, I realized, but wait, in the opposite direction, more cars than usual. Mm. I was like, all right, by the time I'm heading back home, it should clear it's up. It's going to clear up. Mm. So I ran my errand on the way back down. So when I was about, well, it was about seven miles, five miles from home, stand still traffic. I literally, I said, no way can I do this because you spend like hours in traffic. Yeah. And this is a drive that would normally take about five minutes. Wow. And I just decided, okay, 
I had a friend in the area. I parked my car at his house and I walked home. Okay. And in the traffic, they literally had people opening the doors, taking out the coolers. They had beach chairs sitting on the side of the road. So they had their own line going on. Most of them more than likely did not make it. So I can't remember the name. It had a particular name. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But it was a Red Bull event. Yeah, that that day, that traffic jam made news. I remember yeah. seeing it on the news because I was far away from the traffic. But I remember seeing the reports. I'm like, but why would you torture yourself <laughs> with sitting in the traffic for so long? Yes, it was horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, on to hopefully nicer things, given that it's Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> but speaking of stories, I know that the internet was abuzz this week with thoughts and feedback on the movie Malcolm and Marie. And if you are one of our loyal listeners, you would have recognized that I would have definitely watched it because it was one of the movies listed in that gift that we gave to our listeners. There's still a chance for you to catch it if you have not yet downloaded it. Feel free to visit our Instagram profile at Journey to Forever TT and click the link in the bio to get more details. The key mo- key message, sorry, that struck me uh, in watching that movie, Malcolm and Marie, was the fact that Malcolm took Marie for granted. Oh, okay. okay. He, he definitely did. Which leads me to today's topic, which is a week of love. Yes, people. Drew and I don't subscribe to limiting valentine's day yeah because we don't believe in limiting the expression of love to just one day come on every day is valentine's day for us every day any day could be valentine's day you can choose for yourself just pick a day could have more than one day (laughs) just do it exactly joe i like that so our data idea for today is that you have a week of love meaning Every day for an entire week or a five-day period, you could find a way to express love to your partner based on the five love languages. So, Joe and I tried this, and yeah. today's episode, we're going to discuss what occurred and how we felt about it. Oh, well, I could say I felt great. Yes. Bottom line, I was happy for everything that went on that day, uh, that week, actually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. On the first day, let's see, uh, that was, we had massages. Yes. Well, we had dual massages because I massaged her. She massaged me with this new massage machine for sore muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a deep tissue massage. And believe me, it gets in there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and for me, I, I love it because, yes, with coronavirus, while I love massages, I'm not willing to take the risk of going out and getting someone to massage me. Although people say, well, they could still do it with gloves and stuff. Hey, in this instance, you get two for one. You get the lovely massage from your partner <laughs> and you get to that whole bonding experience as yeah. well. So it was really, really lovely. And I, I just feel so good after a good massage. Like yes. your body feels relaxed. It was nice. It was nice. And it was a new machine we bought. And it was like, let's experience this. Let's see how it really works. And believe me, folks, it works. Yes, it All did. Right. It did. And later on, I surprised them with a lunch date. <laughs> yeah, she stole me away from work, folks, in the middle of the day. But I, I like those days because sometimes we know that nobody's job experience is going to be perfect every single day. So for me, I use it as an opportunity to encourage her to just step away from the stress of the work day just for a moment. And we had lunch at this this spot and just parked up and 
engage in one of my favorite activities, just people watching. People watching. <laughs> because you just watch people and in your mind you can make up stories about <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was nice. It was a great experience. The, the thing that struck me from that was how as we watched people walk by and drive by, it brought up like memories because I remember you telling me a little bit about your teenage years, like telling me stories that you may not have shared before. Yeah. So for me, it was, it, that was the, the best part of it, that just watching people and allowing the, the environment to trigger, you know, the conversation was so great. I don't know how you felt up going, having to go back to work, <laughs> but I smiled knowing that you were calm and, and, and less stress for, for a moment. Yes, it was. It was lovely. I enjoyed it. Uh, what did I do? What was my next act? I, I dropped dinner for her. Straight after work, I came home. I dropped off dinner, but I was not staying. So I dropped her dinner with a snack, snickerdoodles. <laughs> which I never had before. Which she never had before. Such a funny word, snickerdoodles. <laughs> but yeah. That was my other app, you know. Something simple, she didn't expect it. I just called and say, hey, I'm away. And dropped off dinner. Yes, and if you know us, perhaps you would have heard our episode on the five love languages. So acts of service is a big deal for me. So to somebody, it might be like, wow, that's so simple. But that, that to me says a whole lot, that you thought of me enough to make sure that I have dinner and my belly is full. Got you. All right. Yeah. And then on top of that, I got a lovely dessert, which I never had before. Mm -hmm. I was smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> awesome. Yes. What was another you did for me? The words of affirmation, which to me, out of all the five days, I enjoyed this particular expression of love because I just Joe mentioned it before I, I love using my words to confirm and reaffirm to, to Joe how much he means to me and yeah you could do a traditional card but like I express, <laughs> express to him this is an open face card because I did a little bit of a craftsy yeah. <laughs> thing <laughs> She did a picture frame mm -hmm. with a white background and red hearts cut out from cardboard or can't remember exactly yeah. what it was, right? With gold writing stating 10 different ways of why she's in love with me, 10 yeah. things she loves about me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm posing right now. Yeah. So, yeah. So if ever there was a doubt, and sometimes, admittedly, we might not remember to say I love you every single day, or even self, if you, you say I love you because you say it so often, sometimes the person doesn't know exactly what you love about them. So for me, it was important for him to have a reminder, a physical reminder, every single time he looks at it, this is why I love you. <laughs> yeah, I think I enjoyed I enjoyed doing that more <laughs> and really and truly I really enjoyed doing that um, and the the last one which is around receiving gifts I call it the gift that keeps on giving yes hopefully it would keep on giving well what I did I ordered an online course that we can do together. It's based around finance. So it's about us building our life together and being financially free. So we are going to do that online together. So we'll let you all know how that goes. Yeah, and, and I told him that there's a day that we need to set up like a recurring date, so to speak, where we check in with each other around the course and have conversations uh, about it, what we've learned, what, you know, how we've, our experience implementing it. 
So yeah, that's that's why I call it the, the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, because <laughs> it has a long term future in it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Oh right, I'm missing one thing. She took me on a date after work. Yes, it was the same day I gave you the, the picture for you. Yes. And um, we went to we had we had what we like, you know. Quick food. You know, nothing great, nothing grand. What was it? Um fries with barbecued chicken strips mm-hmm. and onion rings. And we went and we sat at the waterfront and just sat in the afternoon sun and spoke and laughed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and after that, we went for ice cream. Yeah, where we, we did. Had milkshakes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So it's that a- was a combination of she's taking me to lunch and I'm taking her to ice for ice cream. It, that was so lovely because we ended up spending a yeah, good few that hours was a few together. Hours. <laughs> yeah, straight from work. Yeah, that was great. So talking about ice cream, you know what our next segment is, right? Oh yeah. Thing to eat. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Flo, in our thing to eat segment, what is the most exotic food you ever had? You know, like here where we live, we have things we call wild meat. You know, but things basically animals that lived in forests. You know, they live in the forest. So, what it don't necessarily have to be wild meat. What was your most exotic food? Okay, specifically around wild meat, I had a gooty once. Yeah, okay. Okay, the sauce was better than the agouti <laughs> because whoever, uh, the hunter that tracked down the animal, they used the wrong kind of bullet, so they had those little uh, pellets all over yeah, the buckshot. Yeah, all over the, the animal, and I was like, ugh. So, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. And the, the other thing outside of the ordinary, I would say I had sushi at a quote-unquote fancy restaurant, but it was like octopus. And we didn't, I didn't... You didn't I, take that uh, too much. Um, <laughs> no, no. So, I, I stick to the norm. That's, that's me. Basics. Yeah, basics. Outside of the ordinary, I would just do duck and rabbit. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, those are exotics also, you know. All right. What was my exotic food? Iguana. Okay, how was I that? I had iguana, but folks, I only had iguana or would only have iguana from my neighbor's grandmother. God rest her soul, she has passed now. But that's the only lady who could actually cook iguana and have me eat it. She had a secret sauce or what? I have no idea, but it was beautiful. It was curried and it's just a hint of pepper. It was not too hot. And believe me, folks, I'm picky about my food. Mm-hmm. And I tried it when she gave it to me. And mm-hmm. I was like, do you have seconds? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it tasted lovely. And we ate that with bust up shot skin. Okay. Yeah. What's known as paratha. Yes. which we call roti in Trinidad where we live. Yes. So, yeah, that was my exotic food. I also had um, a guti also. I went to the countryside, basically, and they did that with provisions. Mm-hmm. Minus the buckshot. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I didn't have much of it, you know, but it was nice just to say that I tried it. Okay. Yeah. The one thing that I do want to try if the new normal ever happens and we get the opportunity to travel again, I want to go have alligator. Because I've heard that it tastes really good. You want to go to the bayou? Yeah, I want to go have alligator. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, why is someone hesitant so? I ain't too sure about that. Eh? <laughs> I, I, I might give it a try. Eh? Yeah, I might just give it a try. Yeah, just listen, just a taste. I guess. Alligator better than having silkworms. Okay, all right. That that <laughs> a little too exotic for me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, what's our next segment, Flo? So we round out this week of love episode with our, well, I should say my favorite segment called What Filled Your Love Tank? 
Yes, folks. Well, this week, I believe it was a simple thing that filled my love tank. Uh, I was ridiculously tired. I mean, mentally, I was drained. And who allowed me to sleep? Yeah, she would just say, babes, go sleep. Go get a rest. I know you have an early day in the morning. And that, that was nice. You know, not wanting to talk for two, three hours, knowing that I'm tired. That made me happy. Yeah, you didn't rest. Oh, for sure. Wow. <laughs> yeah, seeing that project I'm on right now, it's getting close to crunch time. So it's going to be longer hours, weekends. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but I'm grateful for that. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. And you felt my love tank when you remembered not only me, but also my family. Because you went out to run an errand and then you brought home roti skins. Well, as we mentioned it before, parata, boss up shot. And it's like, hey, you know, we could share some of this with your mom. So then we went and we dropped it off for her. And it's just the, those simple things where you not only find ways to take care of me, but also my family. So thank you, honey. Yeah, that's our family now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, this is a short and sweet one, people. We hope that you enjoyed your day today, meeting Valentine's Day, and every day. Take a chance on expressing your love outside of just this special day. You know, try this week of love. And, and we want to hear about what things you tried. How did you um, find ways to express all the five love languages? Because I know that we typically would have a top two, but I think all are important in some form or the other. So as always, thank you for listening to the Journey to Fiverr podcast. You can connect with us on Instagram at Journey to Fiverr TT. Yes, also be sure to subscribe on whatever app you are listening to this episode on. And if you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, we would appreciate if you give us a five-star review. Until next time, remember that love is a journey, not a destination. And the fuel that keeps you going is communication. Have a good one, folks. Bye.